Hello, wrenches. Welcome to the Wrench Turners Podcast, Tango Mastery Edition. I'm your host, Joshua Taylor, founder and CEO of the Wrench Turners Podcast, Wrench Turners Online, and Just Work Hard Consulting. Wrench Turners Online, a business providing content, coaching, and digital products to service leaders and mechanics everywhere. In this series, Marshall Sheldon, Richard Mueller, Russell Wickham, and I go into detail and discuss the important topics and challenges facing us me- mechanics across the globe, and more specifically, the techniques involved for conversations needing to happen around the challenges we face every day. Today, we talk about experience and how experience is dispersed amongst our shop floor. Let's get into it. Awesome first question. Marshall, what have you got for us today, good sir? Um, so I was um, thinking a lot about our um, technician shortage that we that we're all uh, along the lines with what Richard's talking about too. So, um, you know, all the statistics out there are saying that the technicians are way older, they're above 40 average or something like that. Um, and then, I think I think my last check it was 41. Right. So the technician age is getting older, and then we're all talking about how these junior technicians, there's not enough of them for all of us uh, across party lines. And uh, what I uh, have noticed is we're already, like in my field, we're already past that. So like if you were to look at the demographics of my shop, there's two guys in my shop that are over 50. And then I think I am the only one with over that like 10 to 20 years of experience area. It's Mm -hmm. just me. I'm the only one in that category. And then everyone else is five years or less. Okay. So from, I was just curious, are you guys seeing that in automotive? Because if in the diesel, heavy duty diesel, we're already being, uh, I wouldn't say flooded, but I would say we're already in that transition where we are pushing heavily to get junior technicians into our field. And we are doing that successfully. The problem is, is that you, the ratio for let's say five years or less experience to 10 years plus experience is like five to one. So there's like five junior technicians to any technician that's 10 years or more. So I was just curious what you guys are seeing in automotive. Is that uh, a similar situation that you're running into? Richard, what do you think? What do you see in? Are you talking like, so, five years from when they step into the shop or because right now like in Canada we have the you got the apprenticeship program and that's four years so I really don't count like their experience level until after they get their ticket right right so um, right now right now my shop is 50 50 I have I got one my bay mates uh, in his 50s he's been in this industry forever um and then i got one guy next to me who's been in the industry about as long as i have so we're in that 10 to 20 year range and then i got three techs that are all in their 20s and they're all within that i would say zero to five year experience range so um and i'm seeing it more and more uh i just interviewed a guy yesterday at work um, he's in that 10 to 20 year range for experience wise, but um, I'm trying to, I'm personally trying to build technicians. Uh, it, we've run, well, I have, I got an ad up on LinkedIn. We have uh, ads on Indeed. We, I put a, a personal ad up on Facebook with my business card and everything like that. Um, and now they're looking at uh, spending money on a recruiter because I cannot 
It's not that I can't find technicians. I know there's a ton of technicians out there. I've, in the past month now, I've given job offers to uh, between at least six technicians and insane, like, it's here what they're making. And I'm like, yeah, I'll pay you this amount. I'll give you a guarantee for the first 90 days. We'll see where you're at. You know, we'll get you in, get your training up. Um, and they turn me down. And I'm just like, what? Like, they just say, oh, no, thanks. I'm okay where I'm at. And it's, I don't know if they're using me as an arguing point to get more money from their current employer or if they're comfortable where they're at and they're scared to leave because they don't want to learn something new. But uh, yeah, our range, I'm 50-50 right now, but it's going to change. It's going to be, I can tell you right now, looking towards the future, we're going to, I'm going to be in that, you know, 20, 80% range where 80% of my staff is going to be in that three to five year experience range or zero to five year. And I'll have nobody in that 20 plus range. And I'll have probably 20% of my staff will be in that 10 to 20 year range because the uh, the older the older technicians, if they're not in a large shop where they have specialties and they're doing like front end work or drivability work continually, if they're just a general technician, they are struggling to keep up with the technological changes that are getting shoved down right now. Like, yeah, it's uh, we're lagging a little bit behind that at GM, but. Some of the manufacturers have like full, it, you could call it self-drive, but it's not self-drive. Like you have to kind of keep one hand on the steering wheel, but the car, the vehicles pretty much drive themselves. And to do all the alignments and crap on that, that's a pain in the ass. And technology is advancing faster than people are uh, able to learn at, you know, uh, it's unfortunate, but yeah, because some of the older guys have a ton of wealth and knowledge and it, and they just leave. They retire or they go find another career because they can't make money turning wrenches on flat rate anymore. And, uh, and you lose a, a, a mountain of experience by them walking out the door. But yeah, uh, it'll be come the future for me. It'll probably be yeah, that 80-20 mix right now in 50-50, but it's going to change. It's changing. And Richard, I feel like too, what we um, we take for granted the basic mechanical knowledge that they walk away with, like the the junior technicians that we have, um, they come in. I know you, in Canada, you guys have a different program, but like the the junior technicians that come in, we're talking basic stuff that if they were under a mentorship directly with an older technician like the ones that are leaving we're talking like basic stuff like double wrenching um leverage uses of leverages um mechanical leverage we're how to use a base. vacuum gauge <laughs> that's what i'm talking about and 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 we all know that we can once you introduce those uh, concepts of leverage and those concepts of, of uh, you can use vacuum for all kinds of different things um, and you can use the vacuum testers for all kinds of diagnostics. Um, those basic concepts that those older technicians walk away with, those junior technicians, they need it to add on to the, the crazy stuff that's going on with the, even the big trucks, the HD mm -hmm. trucks. They're doing some a lot of the self-driving stuff that you're talking about. They're doing a lot of the self-braking. They see something in the roadway and they automatically brake. Um, they're the new technicians are. If we don't teach them all of the basic, uh, those basic skill sets that that those older generations have, that we can utilize, we're we're letting them walk out the door when we could be. I feel like we could we could take advantage of that skill sets that they have and. They don't have to work so hard like they used to, and we can take advantage of those uh, skill sets that they have to pass down to, because uh, we're going to lose a huge, like you said, a tremendous amount of basic mechanical knowledge that those junior technicians really need. You know, that's what they mm -hmm. suffer from the ones that I, I run into. I spend a lot of time teaching them basic mechanical 
uh, ideas and thought processes. Isn't that essentially what you're doing right now, Russell? You've got yourself uh, an apprentice that you're you're coaching up right now. And what are you seeing in your shop and in the shops you've been in recently, especially during your journeys in, in February? Are you seeing that mix about the same as Richard or are you seeing that mix closer to Marshall? The shop that I'm currently at, we have two senior guys, one of them's 26 years and then there's me at 13. Um, everybody else is uh, three years or less. Um, mm. They, there's a, a lot of just ignorance of, of procedure um, because you can't be expected to know all that, but schools don't teach all that. So they have to learn by doing, learn by having somebody there to, to supervise. So um, I spend a lot of time, I've got two of them that are real receptive and one of them, he just wants to stay and work by himself. I tend to leave him alone and so far he doesn't screw things up too badly. So is he missing out? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I still have things I can learn. I still learn things from the guy with 26 years experience. You know, and me being at 13. So, um, there's there's always an opportunity to be learning. Um, so, previous shops I've worked at, um, I had, the last one I was at, they had uh, five senior guys and two apprentices. And by senior guys, I mean guys with 30 plus years experience. Um, and... I don't really understand why they all stayed in that shop because uh, the mistreatment from management was mind numbing. Um, the shop before that, um, they couldn't keep people if their life depended on it, but uh, I won't get into that. Um, before that, it was me at 10 years experience and a guy with uh, three years experience in a loop tech. Um, you know, so the the 50-50 at this point is pretty common. Um, the big thing I'm noticing is you have um, guys with 30 plus, 25 plus, and then you have guys with five or less. And there's not much in between. And you would the, be very correct. I, I, I've got I'm, I'm, just shy of 250 folks that submitted on the beta, uh, on the beta survey, and 71% of the technicians submitted on the on the survey, 71% of them have 10 years or less. 9% at 1115, 9% 16 to 24, and 11% 25 plus. So you have roughly 29% of the population is 11 years or more and 71 percent is 10 years or less and the bulk of that is five years or less at 41 percent 41 percent of our, our mechanic population is five years or less that is a crazy number to think of because it means that two-thirds of the population of mechanics are trying to learn learn from a third of the population and they're so sparse that per shop, because it's it's not what I'm seeing. I'm not seeing 50-50 like Richard's seeing. I'm not even seeing somewhat the mix. Like I'm seeing close to the mix of, uh, it's about three to one in a shop. So three to one is five years or less to one who is more than 10 years. And we're not talking 25 years plus or 30 years plus like you're talking, Rich, uh, Russell. We're talking about 10 years plus. And it's... At 10 years plus, you've only really found your feet for five solid years. Because the first five years, for the most most part, you're you're super focused on learning. You're making truckloads of mistakes. You're buying tools. Life is going on. In all likelihood, you're you're young and you're dumb and you're trying to figure stuff out. And then you get your five years in. And here in Canada, you, you write your license. You become flat rate. You're now responsible for the work that you put out. You're not on somebody else's ticket, as it were. So you're now responsible for yourself. And after five years of that, you're you're just kind of finding your feet. And to think the bulk of our brand new FNGs 
are learning from somebody who's still just finding their feet is a bit scary from a from a journey person and trade perspective so like we're saying here it's it's you know seeing the mix what the mix is it's about two to one in terms of under 10 years and over 10 years that's the end of today's episode wrenches thank you very much for listening thank you very much for watching yes watching is coming folks watching is coming folks because it's going to get dropped to the youtube channel a week after the audio drops yes 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 it's going to youtube gentlemen as always thank you for participating thank you for giving your input it is so very much appreciated thank you very much all for listening and remember to subscribe to the wrench turners podcast on your streaming service of choice and coming to youtube Make sure you don't miss the next episode when it drops. A little paperwork. Always remember that Wrench Turners, Venmo Masteries, come out on Tuesdays. Wrench Turners Podcast comes out Wednesdays, Mechanic Minutes on Thursdays, and Coach's Corners on Saturdays. If you have any questions about the business, about the podcast, or you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, please reach out to me, leader at justworkhard.com. Thank you very much for listening. And remember, always clean your toys before you put them away.